welcome to the MBS Short Views and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Totara. Norman, I am going on strike here. I had enough of taking all this abuse from trainers. We demand our freedom! Oh, wait. I, wait, I missed a quote. They could take our farm, but they can't take our freedom! <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering, like, um... Uh, why, why? I mean, you're kind of free. You're not in the Pokeballs. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, like, you're getting all the base necessities that you want. I mean, from what I heard, the Pokeballs inside is really cool. Nope, no Pokeballs here. <laughs> uh, boy, we, we need Silver and his Great Balls. Giggity. Oh, no. But, anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review... My Little Witch Academia Season 2 Episode 14 I know it's strange but let's roll with it In this episode, the school's fairy go on strike and cut off Luna Nova's source of magic A new teacher arrives and pr- propose a non-traditional me- mechanical solution So, Tara, what do you think? This episode pretty much like a, a filler so it's like getting ready for all these plots to happen later on in the future. It's like, yeah, they got a little story of the fairies going on strike here and there. But then after it's like, it's planting bigger seeds. It's like, oh, this is happening with this one. This one's happening with this one. How it will turn out, you just have to wait and see. Will they actually figure this out and whatnot? It's like, like I said, it's more of a filler. It's interesting that you said that this episode is a filler. It feels like... Uh, no, not really, but at the same time, yes. And what I mean by that is just this. This may go into the review for a bit, but uh, we're just going to highlight the things that we might have missed later on. So those are, uh, Miss Ursula decides to tell Aqua the truth about everything she knows and whatnot, but kind of got swept away. So that's one of those things where, oh, this is not filler. This is kind of a main plot, a story arc, something like that. And then, oh, no, no, Mr. Slayer is uh, swept away. And then we get Akko doing stuff and joins something. And the beat is similar to what you would see in a filler episode. But at the same time, too, they insert a few things that are not really filler uh, they're kind of very important to the overarching story so i do notice that japan likes to do this kind of episode where yay uh this is this feels like a filler episode but it has key important moments that if you miss out on watching it it's kind of your fault yeah pretty much so anywho um as for me this episode was a lot of fun I do enjoy the part where Ako is trying to do the right thing and yeah she 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 has always been the impulsive character where she thinks with her heart instead of her brain and that usually ends her up in trouble but anywho if you guys have not watched this episode yet pause here and go do so welcome back so, we start off the episode with Miss Ursula looking at the, whatchamacallit, this um, picture of the uh, spells. I, I forgot what they call The Trinity spells? Something like that? I think it's like called the the Words of Arctis. I think so, yeah. But anywho, uh, Miss Ursula says uh, Aqua managed to revive, what, uh, three out of the five spells? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six spells, sorry. Uh, three out of the six spells. And that's amazing. And uh, today is the day that I am going to tell her everything about... Well, everything. Like, she, she wants to tell her everything about her destiny and whatnot. And we get to intro and we go... You know, after press intro, we see the girls hanging around the lawn. And Akko just retelling them about... Well, not really Akko. Um, Amanda. Amanda says, Wow, Akko, uh, that trick you performed was really awesome. I wish you can see it. Could you could you perform it again for us? 
And Aku just says, I'm uh, not really. I mean, uh, I, I don't really dictate what the rod does. I mean, it does work, but not when I want it. It's when I need it kind of thing. They talk a bit and Aku decides to, well, um, go to Mr. Star and try to find out more. Or I think it's what Mr. Star called Aku to her office. So she does. She goes to Mr. Ursula's office and waits for Mr. Ursula to say something. But before Mr. Ursula can say something, she gets a phone call by the headmistress and the other faculty stating that the goblins are on strike. So... The goblins, sorry, not goblins, fairies, my goodness. So the fairies ask for more uh, magic from the Philosopher's Stone. But the school can't offer any more because they are already using at max capacity. So what Miss the headmistress decide is that, okay, why don't we try and get some magic from our past alumni. Uh, maybe they can help us with the job or with gathering of magics. And the senior lecturer says, oh, um, this is kind of tedious. Maybe this job should go to the youngest. And the youngest is Miss Ursula. So, no, she is away. Filler, filler, filler. And I'm going to pause here. Tara, what do you think? Well, see, this is what I mean by it being a bit of, mostly a, thr- uh, a th- I almost said thriller. Uh, no, get out of my mind, Michael Jackson. But it's, like I said, it is more of a filler because, I mean, we know that who, we know who Mitch Ursula is from a little glimpse here and there and what the giant fairy said. But Aqua doesn't know. So, you know, we're like, okay, she's finally going to tell the truth. And then this happens. It's like, oh, come on. And then now she's going to leave. And it's like, well, now we're curious. When is she going to tell her? When will be the right moment to tell her? Is she going to be heartbroken? Like, you know, you don't know we don't know what, ha- what might happen. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Miss um, Ursula was about to tell her and whatnot. Suddenly this happened. But at the same time, too, Miss Ursula is... In a position where she seems nervous about telling Ako all about this. And we got no idea why. But I'm sure when the time comes, it will be okay. So, anything else to add, Tara? No, that's pretty much what I got so far. Alright, so let's move on. So, uh, in the cafeteria, we see the girls hanging out. And... Ako got the news that Miss Ursula won't be around because she has to do some errands. And... Yeah, understandable. So we see... Oh my goodness, I forgot her name. What is her name for the uh, psychotic witch? Professor Croy? No, no, no. Uh, eh, Sushi. Oh, that one. <laughs> yeah, so... Sushi is trying to poison Ako with her one, but it's not working and we see the rest of the schoolgirls try to well pour some tea with magic but it's not working and it seems that the battery for the uh, wand is running out because it seems that the goblins or <laughs> the fairies are cutting out magic oh no why how how are they doing that and it seems that they are putting up some magic dampeners. And that's not good. Oh no, that's not good at all. So the, the rest of the people, you know, seeing something like this, hang out near the tower. And suddenly there's a strong gust of wind. And oh no, the fairies who are carrying the uh, shielding for the tower falls to the ground and without magic they couldn't do anything and guess what the lead heroine is going to get squashed 
Episode over. Yay! Oh, I guess that's it. End of oh, recording. Man. Good night, everyone. Yo. We're not that lucky, Terra. We're not that lucky. <laughs> Suddenly, we see drones appearing, uh, stopping the, well, plaything from crushing Akko and some other students. And, wow, that's really awesome. And it's revealed that there is a woman who is standing on a drone. Oh, who could this be? She looks cool and awesome and hip with the kids. Yow. And it is revealed she is the new um, professor for Luna Nova. And her name is... Cro... Croa? No. Cro... <laughs> <laughs> uh, how how do you say her name? Uh, Croy. Croy. Oh wow. I mean, that's how they say it in the anime, Croy. but it's spelled differently. I know, and I'm referring to Japanese, uh, from from Japanese, and it says Kuroa. So Croy. Wow. Um. So yes, professor's name is Croy Merdi Merdis. Oh well, whatever. I don't, don't know about Croy, the last name. Croy, I just Croy. yeah, I just go by Croy. <laughs> yeah. So Professor Croy, she is the new lecturer for modern magic, and she just saved a bunch of students. Yay! But the so she introduces herself and her tech and whatnot, and the other lecturers are not happy with it. And we see that, hey, uh, Croy, or Professor Croy here, is controlling drones with, what you call this, uh, her iPhone. Yay! Awesomeness. So we head back to the... You know what, I'm going to stop here for a bit. So Tara, what do you think, man? Like, that's a pretty awesome reveal. When I first saw the new um, professor flying in with the uh, drones and whatnot, it's like... This one's not even trying to hide it. I mean, the way you dress, the way you make your entrance, and the way how you're trying to change how magic's used, it's like, I smell a villain. I, I mean, you you can't say that for sure. I mean, she, okay, she is unconventional, but maybe she sees more beyond the tradition. Like, time as time goes on, uh, certain tradition doesn't work because it's, adequated so they need to evolve they need to expand their horizon and with mixing mixing modern sorry mixing magic and tech it's a perfect match like what thor said magic is just science unexplained i said that thor oh yeah yeah, that almost sounds like my name you're just saying it in a shorter form (laughs) yeah thor god of thunder (laughs) Uh, at least the Marvel version. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's logical. It's logical. And if you could implement the both of them, that would be awesome. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... I mean, I, I'm making good points here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm making good points here. Yeah, yeah you're making good points. But uh, as time goes on... Yeah, yeah, but as time goes on... <laughs> <laughs> but no, um... But seriously, like, the implementation of... Modern devices and magic is one of those things where it is awesome, especially in this scenario here where uh, magic is kind of limited. So, there, as as we go on, uh, Miss Croy wants to introduce something, but I'm going to stop before I carry on. So anyway, Tara, anything more to add? Well, I do find it funny how... Um... When they figure out, when they try to find out, hey, why isn't our magic working? And then she's, she's like, ah, I'm going to try poisoning your soup. Maybe that'll work. <laughs> like that, that was funny right there. Uh, yeah, Suchi is just insane. But aside from that, not really much to talk about. Just, you know, they're trying to figure out what's the problem. They find the problem. Now they have to figure out how to solve the problem while a lot of other stuff is happening in the background. But also, I need to point something out. Uh, uh, this uh, now now we know how Suchi is, right? I mean, she's always insane, always there for the laws and just trying to kill people. Uh, Pony Life Fluttershy is the same. Ah, coincidence. Previously, 
people say that Suchi is similar to Fluttershy, but not 100%, just her looks. But in Pony Life, yeah. <laughs> so, any who, uh, is that all Tarot? If not, I'm going to carry on. Yeah, that's all I got so far. Alrighty then. So, the girls head back to their room, and it seems that the power's out. Like, the fairies are trapping the magic, not letting it leak out. So, uh, the girls have to deal with no lights. And Akko here in the room is just telling how awesome uh, Professor Croy is and her tech and stuff. And they talk about uh, some students who are in her class have already participated in it, say that her teachings are really awesome and whatnot. And all the students have tablets now. So we head to the principal's office where the lecturers are talking to... Well, they're discussing. They're discussing how um, Professor Croy's methods are a bit unorthodox in their traditions and whatnot, saying that this hullabaloo should not be here and whatnot, uh, especially from that one professor. Oh boy, who is her name? She is similar to McGonagall. Um, what uh, is her I th- name? Yeah, I don't think we ever figured out her name because I know when, so- when we used to do this with Silver, we couldn't figure out her name, so you just came up with a n- nickname. I forget what it was, though. Snooty Pants? But I, I did found her name. Uh, she's Professor Anne. Finel, Finel, but we're going to call her Anne. Oh, not if Snooty Pants. Either or. Yeah. So anyway, um, Miss Snooty Pants says here, Oh no, I, I don't like um, your tech here being in the school. It goes against everything we uh, stand up for and whatnot. It's against tradition. Yes. So... In the morning, we discover that because of no magic, there's no heat and there's no hot water. And the students are really not enjoying it at all. So we go to class and the blue hair professor tells the student to memorize all the spells in the book for the semester. And it's kind of more busy work. Ako here can't take it no more and decide to go and tell the fairies off, uh, inviting Lote to translate for her. So when Ako meets up with the fairies, uh, she tells them off saying that she needs the school to have magic again. So we cut to the uh, professors uh, trying to talk nice with the fairies and it seems that the fairies are not budging until they notice Akko wait what what ha- what happened it seems that Akko has joined the cause for a more better life for the fairies um I, I you would say a union oh no that's bad oh, oh not the union Oh no! Bosses hate it! Ah. <laughs> so anyway, um, it seems that Aqua joined the union and uh, the professors asked Lotte what happened. And Lotte just explains Aqua came here trying to resolve the matter but somehow got swept up by the fairies. So now she's on their side. So... While protesting, uh, Diana comes along saying that how uh, shameful and whatnot. I mean, she is just belittling the heck out of the fairies and whatnot. And then, like, the fairies are kind of, like, ashamed of themselves until Akko says, What do you know, you aristocrats? You don't understand how we feel. And Diana was about to say, Oh, I'm so... Uh, how I would say, but she's not proud, but she's. It's something she doesn't want to have that kind of life, almost. Yeah, I mean, I I think what uh she thinks highly of her until this, 
But at the same time too, Ako is standing with the fairies because they just want to have a better life and whatnot. Yeah. And yeah, it goes to the night and Ako is just uh, sitting with the fairies in unity and whatnot. And the cool thing is uh, Suchi and Lotte are joining her, uh, you know, just keeping her company and whatnot and just trying to understand why she's doing this. Uh, there's a fairy who offers them some soup and whatnot. And Lotte, uh, Lotte no, not Lotte, Suchi just says that, oh, um, there's some disgusting things inside here. And promptly Ako spits it out in Lotte's face. Ha 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 ha. Me and uh, Sushi's face. Yes, Sushi's face. Yes, my bad. But yeah, uh, that got a chuckle out of me. <laughs> uh, I say this come up and... So, in the darkness, Lotte noticed that there is a weird looking fairy. Oh no, I wonder what's that all about. So, in the next day, they meet up in the office trying to discuss or trying to come to an agreement about what's about the strike and the fairies just want a 20% increase in magic use or the magic that they can get and uh, Miss Nudipan says no it's impossible to get because uh, there's none left to well offer comes in Professor Croy saying that I have the solution. I have this uh, tech that's called Sorcery Solution System. I'm not going to say the acronym because that opens up a huge can of worms. What, the, the, the short form of all the S's? Yes. Was that, was that a bad thing? Remember when I tried to say? Well, remember when I tried to shorten Silver Spoon's name? Uh, yeah, you might have to refresh my memory. That's been such a long time. Uh, this uh, it has to do with some very really bad man during World War Two. You might have to tell me about this behind the scenes because I don't remember. <laughs> uh, Silver would remember this, uh, but yeah, uh, the Triple S. Yeah, Triple S would do well. Okay. So yeah, the triple S, the sorcery solution system. What it does is basically it absorbs, it absorbs magic into it like a power bank and distributes it in a meaningful meaningful manner. So the the idea here is that uh, Miss Croy wants to develop it in school so they can have a grant by the government. And yeah, like it's one of those cases where this is a good thing for magic users all over the place because uh, we could generate magic without relying on the Philosopher's Stone. We still need the Philosopher's Stone, but instead of relying fully on it, we can charge it and distribute it. Like this is a good plan and whatnot. But. Um, Miss Snooty Pen says, "No, no, no, no. Uh, we, we. This is not tradition. This is not tradition. This is best me. And with that, uh, the meeting is adjourned, and Ako looks pretty bum. Miss Croy comes along, and Ako says, "Oh, um, thank you for saving my life. And that triple S system there was pretty awesome. Should I?" carry on or should I ask for opinions mm, can't we really say much even if we were to ask for opinions just at the moment nothing we talk about just Akko saying she's on strike she calls Diana an aristocrat they have soup and I mean I admit to the thing with Akko spitting out the soup that was funny I guess the only thing you could talk about it's not that s- that much at the moment is the figure that, that was just standing there yeah, yeah, that, that, that really freakishly figure. Alright. So anyway, I'm gonna carry on. So we see Hannah and Barbera, uh, pl- asking a flame fairy to kind of heat up their, whatchamacallit, this shower so they can take a hot bath. And they bribe it with firewood. And yeah, the fairy does so. 
the the fairy enjoys his um wood and suddenly we see another figure coming in with a bucket of water and dousing it in it uh do we get a reveal of who did it no but you kind of have a feeling of who did it because uh pretty much after the fire fairy dies like well, yeah, I guess you say slowly dies. You see that figure that um, the Lote saw with all the other fairies again. So it's like okay, you know that's this one because now all of a sudden this little figure appears right as the scene happens and blames it on them. It's like yeah, something's really going on here because they didn't kill the fairy, but yet this one's like they did it. I I don't think that is the view. I I think it's just that. Uh, the girls bribe the fire fairy into breaking their, uh, what you call this, strike, and because of that, it seems that there is a riot, and before the riot or in between that, uh, we see Akko and uh, her friends enjoying a nice cup of tea, and I think. Uh, they're screaming in the hallway, and Ako do a spit take, and in, and in this very instant before it happens, Lotte pops up a mushroom umbrella. Sorry, not Lotte. Ah, uh, Suchi pops up a mushroom umbrella, blocking the spray. Like she learns fast. Oh yeah. Yep. So anyway, we discover that there is some chaos in the hallway. Uh, the goblins are mad because. Uh, which we call this the witches broke the treaty or whatnot or the what you call this strike and they want to witches to be punished and whatnot so the faculty agrees to the witches sorry the fairies demand and says that okay uh, everything is cool now you guys won you got your twenty percent and more. So we need to take out the what you might call this uh shielding, and they see a interesting fairy that's blocky and whatnot. Uh, Ako talks to it, but it doesn't really respond. And Lote just says, "Oh no, um, this thing is it has no feeling. It feels like a machine." And with that, it transforms itself into a beast and attacks the girls. Well, at least um, uh, it attacks uh, Akko. Akko falls to her death, and episode over. Good night, everyone. If only it was that easy. <laughs> Damn, second so, time already? I know, right? But like the first, Professor Croy comes in with her drones, saving Akko from falling to her doom. But this time, she reveals that, oh, she has set up the triple S, and is somehow using her drones to suck up all the, what you call this, uh, negative emotions, anger? Something like that? I- I'm guessing that's what it's doing. Yeah, I guess you could say negativity or whatever. Almost like uh, when Starlight was holding, bottling up all of her anger and it was like a red mist. So yeah, I guess you could call it that. Huh, very interesting. So anywho... While she does that, the drones collect all the negative emotions and Professor Croy somehow gathers all those uh, emotions and funnels it into the triple S thing. And it seems that the triple S thing is already fully charged and things are okay. So not only that it doesn't require the Philosopher's Stone, it can gather energy from almost anywhere. Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. The professors are interested in the system and says that, oh, this could be very interesting for the fu- uh, for the future of witches. And Professor Anna is not trusting. Like, she, she feels that there's something fishy going on. So, with that, uh, we see that the day is almost over. Uh, the shielding is taken out. 
uh, the vice the principal just wonders where could the uh, fairies get the shielding, uh, and they bent for a bit but couldn't really figure it out. We see the fairy standing there still, and it seems that Professor Croy was the one controlling it. Oh no, she's evil! Oh! Yes, I did not see that coming. I know, oh, and she proclaims that the stage has been set for her to do her stuff. Oh no, what's going on? So, in the next page, we see that the Triple S is implemented in school, the fairies are not on strike and have come to agreement with the stu- with the faculty. And now, uh, technology is being integrated into school and all the kids can use a tablet now. Yay, awesomeness. And with that, uh, I won't say episode end because there's a bit more. Miss Ursula comes back with a bunch of energy or magic, but the headmistress says, ah, we don't need it anymore. Thank you for your hard work though. And yeah, these are filler episode vibes. Especially with uh, Ursula's reaction to uh, the new professor. But before that, uh, she wants to tell Ako everything, but before she could tell her, um, she sees Miss Croy. Oh no, and it seems that they have history. I wonder what is that history. Ooh. We're just ha- going to have to wait and see. Yes, and with that episode ends. Ah. Very scary, very scary. So with that, um, Tara, what do you think of this episode? I think it was a very decent episode. Uh, it had an interesting moment with, uh, you know, the fairies going on strike, and all of a sudden the main character, Akko, decides, yeah, I'm going to join the fairy side. Screw the witches! <laughs> <laughs> but then, like I, like I said earlier, it's a, it's a filler. You got all these plots like, ooh, Ursula knows Croy? How does this... Well, how does this come to be? Why does she seem so uh, concerned about this? And who is this new professor with this technology? What is her plan? And you don't think that maybe Akko would mention about, you know, oh, a giant creature attacked us in, in the top of the tower where the stone was. He looked all, like, robotic. And then, you know, that, I mean, that probably ended the season right there and then. But, you know, she just decided, yeah, I'm not going to talk about the giant thing that attacked me. It looked like a robot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where if they just talk, it could have been solved. But, eh, well. But overall, um, I, I liked it. Uh, this episode for a season two starter was not bad. We, we got introduced to the new, I wouldn't say conflict, um, to the new antagonist. And we are on the road to discover the quote unquote plot. And this season's plot is for Ursula to tell Akko everything. But what is that going to entail? What is going to happen and whatnot? And we see the new antagonist and stuff. And is she really an antagonist on what? Because it seems it seems that what she's doing is kind of for the benefit of the school. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Yes. But anywho, Tara, uh, anything more to add? No, just like I said, it's a very decent episode, got a lot of filler, and if you have all these questions, you just kind of have to continue on with the uh, season. Yep, and that's what I did. I, I kind of spoiled myself by watching more, because <laughs> it was really getting good. It was really getting good. So anyways... If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or they can just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome. Guys, go check him out. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitch Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on printlive.com. Links will be in the show notes. 
If you like support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, my stuff like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I have been Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Mia Show. See ya. Bye-bye. So, at least uh, we know now that your tech needs magic to work. Yes, all thanks to the new professor who is totally not a villain. I know, your computer froze mysteriously somehow, but at least with her help, it's not frozen anymore. Yeah, it's very odd how we were just about to talk about Little Witch Hawk Academia, then my computer go- gets frozen, and then as soon as we talk about Professor Croy, it's back to being normal. I know, right? The timing is impeccable. <laughs> I mean, it's like she knows that we're going to talk about her. <laughs> Makes me wonder if all anime characters are real. Oh, uh, you, know, you, you, you know some offset of people who think they're real. Wait a minute, if anime is real, that means there are Pokemon out there for me to see. Nah, man, you need to go for the Digimons. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.